Hello. Let's start off our accounting spreadsheet by entering the various columns that we will need to describe and to analyse our data. So, in cell B7, type in date and then cursor 1 to the right and in C7, type in transaction. In D7, enter description and in E7, enter analysis. F7 contains our reference, whilst finally enter value in G7. Now that we have these headings, let's quickly adjust the various column widths so that we can see their entire contents and that when we come to enter our data, we have plenty of room. We'll continue the design of our accounting spreadsheet by entering a heading in cell B2. So, enter your business name, followed by a description of your accounting period. In box B3, enter start date, and alongside, in C3, enter the first date of your accounting period. Do the same thing in cells B4 and B5 for the final dates. Now, we're going to reserve the top right-hand side of our spreadsheet to record our bank details and balances. So, in cell F2, enter Open Balance. And in cell F3, enter the name of your bank, followed by the word Receipts. In F4, it's your bank name, followed by the word Payments. Box F5 contains your close balance. And finally, navigate to cell G2 and enter an opening balance value of 100. In this section, we're going to create a list of our income and expenditure types on a separate worksheet. So, double click on the Sheet 1 tab and change the sheet name to read Accounts. Then, click on the plus side alongside to add a new worksheet and change that worksheet's name to Tables. Now, whilst in the Tables worksheet, navigate to cell D2 and then enter Equals and point to cell B2 on the Accounts worksheet and then press Enter. This retrieves our heading from the Accounts Worksheet and copies it into the Tables Worksheet. Now, while still in the Tables Worksheet, select cell D4 and type in Expense Types. And in E4, type in Totals. Now, select C5 and enter the number 1. And in cell C6, enter the number 2. Now select both of these cells, numbers 1 and 2, and drag, copy them down until it reaches C19, such that you now have numbers 1 to 15. OK, now let's enter our in income and expenditure names in the boxes D5 through to D19. Now you can use your own description or copy the values already entered. These are Sales A and Sales B for your incomes, followed by Materials, Subcontract, Telephone, Internet, Advertising, Repairs, Travel Costs, Subsistence, Entertaining, Fuel Costs, Bank Charges, Accountancy and Sundries for your expense types. Now, don't worry if these descriptions are not suitable for your business, as you can change them once the accounting spreadsheet has been completed. So let's now move on to the next section where we name this range. So that Excel can identify easily with our list of income and expenditure types, we're going to give the range D5 through to D19 a name. Just select this range 
and from the formulas ribbon select define name and in the dialog box name enter expense types with no spaces and click OK. Now that we've created our income and expenditure list and called it expense types, we can move back to the accounts worksheet and create a new list for our transaction types. We want the only options to be either our bank receipts or our bank payments. So highlight the range F3 to F4 and from the formulas ribbon select once again the define name command and then in the dialog box that opens enter transaction types with no spaces and click OK. Now navigate to box C8 and from the data ribbon select the data validation tool. Select list from the drop down box in the allow field and enter equals transaction types with no spaces in the source field and then click OK. Now select E8 and repeat the process with the source field now reading equals expense types with no spaces. Both the transaction and the analysis cells now contain drop down boxes for you to select your transaction type and your expense type. Now that should make data entry quite easy. Navigate to box B8 and enter any date and type ABC Limited into D8. For your analysis, select Sales A and type in any reference in F8. Finally, enter 250 in the value box G8. Go back to B8 and right click your mouse and select Format Cells. In the category box, select Date and accept the default format. The next four boxes are OK, but we want the reference box to align to the left. And finally, we want to change the value box G8. So highlight this cell, right click your mouse, select Format Cells, and this time select Number from the category section. Change the decimals to two, click the 1000 comma separator box, and choose the red with a minus sign for displaying negative numbers. We can now highlight the entire first row B8 through to G8 and drag and copy the contents and formulas down to row 19. Once we've done this, we can delete the data copied into the range B9 to G19 and then to indicate the end of the data section, type the word end in box B20. We now want to return to our tables worksheet and enter the formula to calculate total values for each of our expense types. This is best performed by using the sum if command. Now, to make this routine easier, it would help us to give some names to various ranges within our accounts worksheet. So, select the range E8 to E20 on the accounts worksheet and from the formulas ribbon select define names and call this the analysis range with no spaces and then click OK. Do the same for the range G8 to G20 and call this value range again with no spaces. Now we're ready to enter the sum if command to calculate our expense totals. We can now return to the tables worksheet and enter our sum if command. Simply select cell E5 and enter in the following command equals sum if open brackets analysis range comma D5 comma value range and close the brackets. This formula will add together all of the data elements on the accounts worksheet where the data contained within this range is the same as that in D5 on the tables worksheet. Now once we have the formula successfully entered into E5 we can simply copy and drag the formula down to cell E19 to get the total values of all of the expense types. Let's tidy up and make clear our tables worksheet. 
First of all, from the page layout ribbon, uncheck the view grid lines box to give our worksheet a nice crisp and clear white background. Now select D2 and using the home ribbon, make bold and increase the font size. Select the range D4 to E4 and change the background color to blue and change the font color to white. And using the borders tool, select all borders. Now highlight the range C5 to E19 and with the borders tool again select all borders. Play around with the column widths to ensure that you can easily see all of the data. In the totals we want the number to be to two decimal places with the 1000 comma separators in and negative values to show as red preceded by a minus sign. Now, with the range E5 to E19 highlighted, select the conditional formatting tool and then choose highlight cell rules and then the equal to option. Enter the value zero and select custom format from the drop down box on the right hand side. From the font menu, select the color palette and choose white. Now click OK and OK again. Now only the values other than zero will be displayed. Returning to the Accounts Worksheet, you will recall that earlier we defined and named the value range G8 to G20. We now need to do the same for the range C8 to C20. So highlight this range and from the Formulas ribbon select the Define Name tool and in the dialog box enter the name Transaction Range with no spaces. Now navigate to box G3 and we can enter another sum if command to get the totals of all bank receipts in our data range. So enter the formula equals sum if open brackets transaction range comma f3 comma value range and then close the brackets. This formula says calculate the total of all the instances where the value in f3 appears in the transaction range and then from the value range Add these totals up. Now, with your cursor still in G3, simply copy and drag down one line so that the formula is also applied to the payments line. So we now have two formulas to calculate both our bank receipts and our bank payments. We also have entered our opening bank balance of 100 in cell G2. We can now complete this section by entering a simple formula of plus G2 plus G3 minus G4 in the closing bank balance cell of G5. Now, to complete our accounting spreadsheet, we can apply some formatting, have a general tidy up, and make the finished template look a little more professional. So, from the page layout ribbon, uncheck the view grid lines box. Now, Highlight box B2 and increase the font size and make it bold. We'll change the font colours of the two date fields C3 and C4 to dark grey and do the same for the bank narratives in F2 to F5. Let's format the bank values in cells G2 to G5 such that they now have two decimal places, that the 1000 comma separator is checked and that negative numbers display as red preceded by a minus sign. Now highlight the headers range B7 to G7 and change the background colour and the font colour and make it bold. With the entire data area B7 to G20 selected, use the border tool and select all borders. And finally, highlight the end line B20 to G20 and change the background colour. And that finishes our design and development work. In the next section, we can test it all out. In this section, we're going to fully test out our accounting spreadsheet. So let's enter some data into line two. Enter a date, choose bank payments from the transaction drop-down box, enter a reference, and choose one of the analysis types. Put in a reference of your choice 
and finally enter a value. We can see that the bank balances have correctly been updated and that if we switch to the tables worksheet we can confirm that the analysis values have also been successfully updated. Returning to the accounts worksheet enter a new payments line such that the total value will put the bank balance into overdrawn which should show correctly as a negative. Go backwards and forwards between the two worksheets and fully test each line. If you need extra lines or indeed extra analysis types then by using the techniques demonstrated earlier you can easily increase the accounting spreadsheets capacity. We do hope that you found the contents of this video both instructive and to be of use to you and your business. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching our spreadsheet video. We hope that you enjoyed it and that there was lots of content that you found useful. Now, if you'd like us to send you a copy of the completed spreadsheet, then all we ask is that you subscribe to one of our channels. So you can like via the Mr. Spreadsheet Facebook page. You can follow on Instagram where it's at Mr. Spreadsheet or follow us on Twitter where it's at Mr. Underscore Spreadsheet. Oh, and yes, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel where there are many other spreadsheet solutions for you to watch. Now, if you're a small business, then why not watch our How to Keep Accounts in Excel video? It's a great inexpensive solution for your accounts and bookkeeping needs, and this will play automatically once this video ends. Many thanks for your attention.